Yo, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Uh, this is Comic Kai Soundwaves, and I couldn't get my hands on one of those NES minis, uh, classic console things. So, you know what? Nintendo was always third or fifth or 22nd to me, whatever. So, I actually got one of these things the at home's Sega Genesis plug and play console thing. Uh, now, this was a gift from my youngest son for his birthday, but I actually spent a couple good hours playing on it. It is disappointing, to say the least. Now, I will say that it does have a couple of cool things going for it that you're not going to maybe find at some other plug and plays. It does actually have controller ports on it. Now, these controller ports do work. These are not just for show. You can actually plug a Sega Genesis console. Con or console. You can actually plug a Sega Genesis controller in here or an Atari controller because those actually have the same pins and it will work. It also has a little door and it has this, which yes, if you wanted to plug a Sega Genesis game in here, yes, it does work. So that actually is really, really cool that they did that. I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. Now, what isn't cool is that uh, not not what I'm covering up with my hand. This is how you'll plug it up for its power, which is a DC 9 volt, which Whatever, you know, that's kind of Obsolete at this point, but hey, it ships with it. No need to find one, etc, etc. Now This this is video audio Not even yellow red and white. It's just yellow and white. Okay. So you're getting pretty crappy sound when you plug this thing up. It is 50 bucks and it does say that it comes with 80 games. It's completely accurate. It is 80 games, but not all 80 games are Sega Genesis games. You're not getting 80 hit Sega Genesis games or 80 games made from Sega. You're getting like maybe 30, 30 of the the more known you know like to get those Sega Genesis pack title games uh, where usually mostly comes with Sonic mostly comes with some of the hit games like Shinobi it comes with uh, Rice Star and Columns etc etc uh, the other the other half or even more than half you're getting just crappy games like chess uh, checkers uh, you know puzzle games you know you know just terrible terrible not even worth your time games. Now, the games that aren't here that are worth your time, they're still not worth your time. Now, what I mean by that is, yeah, you can play Sonic, you can play the games that ship with it, but the actual quality of the video of the game is pretty god awful. It's so pixelated, it just looks downright atrocious. And we're gonna actually look at some games. Now, also, the most important part of playing a game is the controller. Now, I will say to its benefit, it does ship with two controllers. Are they Sega Genesis controllers that you plug right into here? You're not so lucky. It does ship with two of these, okay? These are like the second generation Sega Genesis controllers that have the, the buttons on top and the bottom. Uh, now, you can't tell it from looking at it on screen but if you haven't played one of these things or bought one of these things this thing feels flimsy it feels cheap it feels so plasticky it just feels uh cheap now it does take batteries now to it's also to its credit it is wireless which is it's pretty cool now i have moved it into my office which my office is basically a closet and and i play with it around just for a minute to test it when i was recording some games just to make sure it still worked now, I didn't have any problem pointing it in any direction for it to kind of read the sensor, see how it writes up when you're putting button input to let you know that this signal is going out and the console should be picking it up. This console is not a console. It worked, you know, I kind of pointed it at the ground, kind of pointed it up and I was like, oh man, it's actually reading it very, very well. Now, when it was in my living room, which my living room's way bigger than this closet, if I wasn't pointing the controller directly at the console it wasn't reading it if i slightly turned it to the right or maybe i was holding it straight up like this how i should intentionally play games it wasn't reading it i had to literally hold it just like this pointed at the console when i was like maybe more than five to seven feet away from it 
um, which is really inconvenient because I don't want to have to make sure I'm aiming the controller at it. Now, also speaking of controller, it's just awkward. It's just like it feels somewhat comfortable in your hands to a degree, but the D-pad, it's like it's it's so plastic around the actual crosses right here. When when you slide your hands across it, it just feels like it, it kind of irritates your thumb. It feels not I mean, you can do it, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't feel comfortable in the slightest. It's it's It kind of just irritates your finger as you keep moving it across it. It does have the ABC, um, X, Y, and Z buttons on top. And it does have fighting games like Mortal Kombat, but these don't even work. I don't really think that I found a game on it thus far where these buttons even work. So my whole question is, why are they even included? why not maybe do a bigger pad with just the abc and and then then figure it out from there like the old ones if you were playing mortal kombat you had to hold start to use the high low and kick etc etc that would have been a way better way to go than this yeah i think i mean these buttons do work i think i tested them on a few games they do like the same thing maybe the a does that the x does or whatever because it's on top of each other but when you know when it's a fighting game when it should have you know these for the high and these for the low no, they just don't, they just don't work at all. So I just don't understand what the inclusion of them are. Now, there are a lot of Sega Genesis games and for the very, very basic ones, it works. It works, okay? Now, if you get any more intricate as far as like playing a fighting game like Mortal Kombat, you're not doing any ice freezes with Sub-Zero. You're not doing any finishing moves. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you can do a finishing move on Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3, which are included, I will send you 50 bucks. I don't care. This is ridiculous. I I could not do anything. I was getting my ass handed to me over and over and over in Mortal Kombat where it was like, I don't even understand why this game's included. Maybe it was just easy to program and throw on there to say, there's Mortal Kombat on it. it. Doesn't matter. It might as well not even be there. I'd rather not even be there for me waste over like 40 minutes trying to figure out that I actually can't even play it with this controller. Other than the controller, yeah, it has the buttons, yeah, it has a D-pad. Now, it does have a start button, which does pause it, as it would any other Genesis games. And it has a menu button, which it literally will just reset the console and bring you back to the menu. Basically, what it does is it does the option here, which is the reset button, which basically this doesn't do anything other than just bring you back to the menu. So, speaking of this, if you were thinking, hey, you know what would be interesting and cool? What if I threw a, a Sega 32X on top of this? You know what I mean? It's got the thing right there. Yeah, you're out your mind. That's never going to happen with something like this. No way. Also, there are games on the Sega Genesis, which I believe it was X-Men. I don't know if it was Uncanny X-Men or the X-Men. Anyway, there was a point in the game where you had to hit the reset button to go back or do something because the game would just get to a point where it was kind of a, a trick or something other. You had to hit the reset button in order for that game for you to progress in it. That ain't working with this. You hit that reset button if you decided to buy X-Men and plug it in here and, 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 and think you're going to play that entire game like this. You get to that point, it's a dead end. There is no turning around. There's no making a U-turn. You're done. That game is completely over with for you. Um, I don't know if there's any other games like that. I can think off the top of my head where you had to utilize the reset button, but that is one game I remember for a fact you have to use a reset button. But overall, I'm not going to say that it's it's completely uh, not worth your time. I will say that it's not worth 50 bucks. So without further ado, let's plug this bad boy up and let's just look over some of the games and see what they look like and see what they sound like. And it goes straight to the menu, just like this. Uh, now, what you're greeted with is um, the Sega Genesis games that are included, which are a lot of common Sega Genesis games that you see in all the Sega Genesis uh, rehashes and packages, etc., etc. Um, and they're all in alphabetical order. Now, these two games right here, Columns and Columns 3, I've actually spent a lot of time with. Uh, not even then, but now recently, just because they're, you know, for the controller, and I, I told you how terrible it is. These games actually work pretty well for the controller. And this is the original, original Candy Crush or Toy Blast, man. You can spend hours in this, uh, even like 10 years from now. They're just classics. Uh, Comic Zone, great, great game. Uh, it, it Here, it's it doesn't work as great just because of the controllers. Um, continuing over, this is another, this is the next list. Here's an Eternal Champions, a fighting game. 
Yeah, it's damn near impossible to uh, beat this. Uh, it's you, you can't pretty much do anything. And, and you got some Golden Axe games, which are pretty typical with something like this. Um, Kid Chameleon, one of my favorite games as a kid. Um, it's uh, not fantastic uh, here, but, you know, if you want to play around with it and relive it, eh, it works to a degree, but even with the controller. And you got Mortal Kombat 2 and 3. Uh, yeah, we'll get into those in just a minute, but these are pretty much impossible to play with this controller. Um, moving on, more standard um, games you would see with a Sega Genesis collection, and here we have Shinobi, not the first one or second one, you have Shinobi 3, and uh, gotta be honest, never was really a fan of Shinobi. Okay, okay, they're great, they're great. Okay, okay, moving on. Uh, Sonic games, 3D Blast, which, n n no point even clicking on that, we all know how that works. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, uh, Sonic Spinball, which is basically just, um, Pinball, there we go, I don't know why I just froze for a second, I was trying to think what the hell the game was called. Uh, here we go, more Vector Man games, pretty standard stuff. Now here is what we're starting to get into, the games that are not Sega games that at Games decided to uh, make it 80 games. And here are what you're working with. Uh, just a bunch of crappy uh, shooters like this, like um, like Atari games with a little bit enhanced graphics. Uh, I did play chess for like 45 minutes one night just because, I don't know, I like chess. Uh, then here you go, so just some more matching games. And just, just honestly, just crap. It's something that you'll turn on and, and you'll play it for like maybe three minutes until you realize that you have way more things better to do in your life, even if it is like picking boogers. I mean, look, T Rex memory match. I mean, really? Really? Okay. So now we're back in the Sega games, but there's one game that, that look, I mean, this is, this is what we're talking about Meatloaf Rotation. Okay, meatloaf rotation. That, that that's 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 you know. Okay. Anyway, so let's go ahead and go on to probably the most famous game on here, which is Sonic the Hedgehog. Not two. We're gonna go ahead and boot up the first one. Hit the start button. Pretty typical stuff. Now, what you're gonna notice is the sound here. It's not right. I mean, what is that? Why does it sound like that? Look, let's go ahead and start it, okay? No, actually, it actually took over for itself. Huh? Let's actually start. Just something is off with the sound. Just listen to it. Oh, this is like the most annoying sound in the world. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? It's like the most annoying sound in the world. It sounds like... It sounds like... I don't know, like... Sonic the Hedgehog's funeral. Like, someone couldn't afford a decent, like, MP3 player. And I, I, I have no idea. So, let's go with... Let's try out Mortal Kombat 2, which I spent way too many hours with. Let's check out Mortal Kombat 2. And once again, the sound works, but it just sounds so terrible. Now I'm going to pick my favorite, Sub-Zero. Well, let's, uh, the first match is going to be a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. I'm not going to be able to do anything. It doesn't work. It doesn't work for fighting games. Fight. Here we go. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Mortal Kombat's not easy on its own anyway. Come on! Do it! I'm doing the move. 
I'm doing the move. I, oh, I got it. I'm doing the move. I'm doing the move. Oh, look, we got it. We got it. Look, look. I'm doing the move. 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 Ah! Okay. Let's do that one more time. I got it to work. Let's see if I can get it again. Okay, look. Come. Uh, got it. Get the fuck out of here! To make it work with this controller is damn near impossible. Now, another fighting game on here is Eternal Champions, which I did play a lot. Um, not a lot, lot, but I remember renting it as a child. Uh, or my dad rented it for me. It was, you know, the craze when Mortal Kombat was going on, so, like, fighting games with violence was the thing. So... Let's see how well we fare here in a match. Probably not too good. We're going to go with uh, this guy. I always like this guy for some reason. Can't even, nope, look, 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 I am getting my ass torn apart here. Look, I, look. Now here, the XYZ buttons do work, but still not seeing, like, it, it's, it's so unresponsive. It's like you click the button, and it's like half a second later is when he'll respond. And I have the controller pointed at the console directly. So that's kind of what you're working with if you want to play a fighting game on here. Not your best bet. Now, Columns 3, I will say that I spent a lot of time with uh, on here because, you know, I mean, it doesn't look terrible I and mean, you don't really, you know, look for this. But, um, you know, for what it is, it's, it's a good time waster. And it's like the original Candy Crush, man. I mean, you can you can play this right here, right now, and instead of like your mobile games, and have just as much fun or something like this. Um, a puzzle game, you know, uh, doing like the kind of like Tetris style things. And this right here, I mean, I swear, it just kind of like never, never loses its charm, never gets old. And to this day, I think it's still fantastic. Face spider. Now, with the other games, you, you pretty much you've seen the most uh, well-known ones, and you're pretty much going to get the same thing you see with all the other ones that you see. I picked out some of the more famous ones to play with, and if you saw what you saw with those, you're going to see what you see with them. Now, is it worth the money? Well... So, in conclusion, this for 50 bucks is a little absurd. This, being able to put in your own games, pretty cool. Would the games be more playable if you plugged in your own Sega Genesis controller? Absolutely. But I'm not rating it on that, I'm rating it as what it ships with. So, it's it's okay to go back, you know, and want to relive some of the games for like, you know, Sonic and etc, cetera, etc, cetera, but you can get those like on those mobile devices for a dollar each. And really, if you want to introduce your kids to, you know, retro games or you want to go back and relive your past, I get it. I understand it. But this is not the way to go. And this is not the way to do it. Now, this I could actually buy. That's the cool thing about this. Not like one of those NES mini console retro, whatever they're called. This is actually accessible. You can pretty much find these anywhere. Now, I do think this should be more like around 20 to 25 bucks. I think that's a reasonable price for something like this. Now, like I said, it was a gift for my son. He is four, um, and he played the Sonic games, but he has Sonic like on, on the tablet, and he would much rather play it there with an actual tablet controls, even how terrible those are, than an actual controller with this on the TV. I do think this is a good thing to do with this, where you can actually plug in the, the actual controllers. I, if the NES mini console thing would do something like that, I think they would have struck a chord. Uh, this right here is really cool. It's very accessible. It makes it open up to other Sega Genesis games if you want to go that route. But 
Other than that, I think it's just a pile of crap. It, it really, really doesn't do what it says it can do. Which, and it's very misleading with 80 built-in games, but it doesn't tell you that they're all not Sega games. Now, the Sega games that are on here, the handful of them that are playable, they're okay. They're, they, it does us justice there. The, the other second games that you're thinking, you see Mortal Kombat, oh man, I'd love to play Mortal Kombat. You're not gonna be able to do it here. It's just a gimmick, it doesn't work. So, anyway, this is Comic Alley Soundways. Uh, hope you enjoyed my uh, review of the At Games Sega Genesis uh, retro console plug and play. And uh, we'll see you next time.